The South African social grant system is said to be one of the best in Africa. However, it's not without its problems. Tonight we expose illegal and fraudulent deductions from hundreds of unsuspecting pensioners and other grant beneficiaries whose poverty is further perpetuated by this practice while the culprits get away with impunity. The 76-year-old grandmother, Mama Siski, is from Akwasi, close to Bulmeranstadt in the northwest province. She receives a monthly pension, but finds it difficult to make ends meet. Most of the time, she sells roasted peanuts to children in the neighborhood to survive. <laughs> To make matters worse, she's been experiencing inconsistent debit deductions since July 2013 and amounts of up to a thousand rand have been deducted monthly. She also says it all started when government introduced the new card. In 2006, government established the South African Social Security Agency, known as SASA. Its role is to distribute social grants which provides a safety net for the poor. In 2012, SASA awarded the contract to pay grants to Cash Pay Master Services, or CPS. They introduced the card, which according to Mama Siski, was the beginning of her troubles. But she's not the only one. In another case, hundreds of kilometers away, Melissa Schaffers, an unemployed single mother who lives in Camus in the Northern Cape, is also experiencing unexplained airtime deductions from her child support grant. She is on her way to the local Kemus Sasa office to get some answers. This is not her first trip and it's costing her 20 rand each time she has to make the trip. But the problems these families are experiencing are widespread. During our investigation, we found many cases where such transactions left beneficiaries, often with very little at the end of the month. Before the introduction of this card system, communities were at the mercy of unscrupulous loan sharks. They used to hang out at pay points and hold on to people's ID books. But now experts say a more sophisticated form of extortion is taking place. The nature of the loan sharks has changed dramatically. It's now sophisticated and run by people who are skilled in the financial services industry. Dango says the problem lies with the service provider CPS, which is linked to a bigger company called Net One. And unfortunately, our own service provider, who is Cash Pay Master Service or CPS, which is then linked into a, a bigger group called Net One, has um, related financial service industry players within that group and it's in that space we'll be finding a lot of abuses happening. So it seemed like a good idea of creating bank accounts for grant beneficiaries had disastrous consequences. But we want and we want the poor to be able to access the money as much as you and I can access money. But what we don't want is for the poor to be ripped off through the under the mantle of, of financial inclusion. The man who created the new system and head of CPS and Net One is Dr. Balamant. He says there's nothing wrong with providing financial services to people. Some of his own companies are service providers. Now, Moneyline is a subsidiary of Net One. We've been in existence for 20 years. No Moneyline, it's not new. It's been giving loans to everybody for a long, long time. But it's not just Moneyline involved in providing loans and other services to grant beneficiaries. Because of the information that is freely available, grant beneficiaries are open game to companies offering loans. The human rights organization Black Sash and its community-based partners were amongst the first to sound the alarm bells. That's when we discovered deductions for airtime, deductions for loans, deductions for water, 800 rand from people's accounts, deductions for multiple funeral covers, um, whilst the law allow only, the Social Assistance Act, only allow for one um, funeral 
cover the funeral scheme. Huge monthly deductions are made via EFT off the beneficiary's account, such as this one from Mama Siski Piri. Her December mini statement shows a 190 rand deduction from Moneyline and additional EFT deductions from another unidentified bank. Ma'am, there's deductions every mm -hmm. month. But you know, uh, we've, we've heard all of, all of these stories. Okay, and, and, so and, and some of them, by the way, and, and some of them are true. Yeah. No, but again, we must be careful when we make these statements. But I want to make sure we understand that there are 10 million people. And that 300 of them complaining about something does not make the system bad. Because 300 is nothing. According to the task team established by the Social Development Ministry in February 2014, 10 million bank accounts are at risk, affecting 17 million grant beneficiaries. If you have one pensioner who is expected to receive less than half of what government intended him to get, then that's a problem. So it, it's not just playing with numbers. These are real people. And we need to put processes in place to be able to protect those people. Not everybody's coming forward. You know, so people are coming to organizations like Black Sash. People are coming directly to the minister. Um, we feel that it could be worse. Um, and what is, what is clear is that every grant recipient is potentially open to this kind of abuse, given the fact that everybody is in the system. The 75-year-old Jacob Uris grew up in the picturesque Franschhoek Valley, a region famous for its export wines and gourmet restaurants. This wealth is often not shared with farm laborers. After a lifetime of working on farms, Mr. Uris and his family have to survive on his and his wife's meager government social grants. Despite the small monthly payment, they were recently scammed into buying additional funeral cover, even though they have already had policies. Man, ik is van Sasa. Wees een papier van ja, Sasa op. Ja, Sasa op. En Sasa doet beschrijven dat al die bejaardes, oude mensen, kan nog op voorraad eet nemen. Want dat je ons, zeg maar bijvoorbeeld, als je dood gaat, dan kan die kinderen wat geld op is voor die polissen. Goed al, baas je ID's. En ons breng je ID's. Schreef hij die nummer op en en is hastig. En die kan ze geen om je politie te zien die er geliefd. Hij hij schreef net, hij schreef net en al zit maar. Toen vraag ik voor me wat die nodig is, want ooit het politie op die plaats. Toen zei ik me ja, het is nodig. Het ooit er moet dingen. Toen zei ik ik verstaan niet. Toen zei maar ze zei het wel of het stier. Ik zie ik voor die man na, die man weg is, maar die man heeft me zo hastig gelijk. Die man was bij je hastig. Want ik die voor ons laat, die kan deze maat op de printer gebouwd. They try to cancel the policy and stop the deduction from the Sasa bank account, but have been ignored. Ooit het een meisje genader aan haar mis leven. En zij het voor die Sasa gebouwd. Om te vragen of hulle iemand uitgestuur het. Toen zei hulle dat er aan die kinder sê. En toe bel sy vir Vestus. En toen die eerste plek toe vraag waar, hoe kom het jy gebemoeid met ander mense? Sê ek, hoe sê sy met die mense vir ons gaan na, pa gaan nader? En toe druk hy die phone af, toe sy vete praat. En toe skakel sy om weer. En toe weet hy die selfde gedoen. We provide social grants, and grants are intended to provide for the needs of the poorest of this country. That is absolutely clear. So anybody who goes in and tries to market any product under the banner of Sasa is lying. It also seems to have happened to a number of people in the area. We then called the agent who sold the policies to get some clarity. Shortly after our visit, we were informed the policies of the Yuri's family were cancelled. But despite promises, the deductions were still going off their Sasa bank accounts in January, leaving them in desperation. We also found mysterious airtime mobile phone deductions from most of the beneficiaries we visited. 
In Tuiafontaine, Mpumalanga, Johannes Mputing lives with six grandchildren. He gets grants for three of the children. He collects cans which he sells to supplement their income. Since July 2014, him and his wife have been plagued by airtime deductions despite not having a cell phone. By the end of the Inquisition, <laughs> admitted that it was either a daughter, a son, a neighbor, a friend, a mother, or somebody else that actually used the actual cell phone information. Now, I'm not saying that they all do that, but if no one reports it to us, so it's we can't do anything about it. Yeah, the Despite trying dialing the helpline at the back of his Sasa card, he had no success. He says other beneficiaries in the neighborhood had similar complaints. But they go to people who are going to go. It's the same thing. In our travels across the country, we found several patterns of unexplained deductions. For instance, 800 rand for water, a free service, without detailed billings from the municipality, and different types of airtime deductions. Mama Siski is frustrated, and out of desperation, she approaches the local advice office to assist her. At least they will forward her complaint to Sasa's office. We sent a formal request to CPS, who sent us a detailed summary of her deductions. Sasa legislation is clear. Confidential data of all grant beneficiaries must be protected by the service provider, CPS. And Black Sash says deductions like Mama Siski's should not have been going through in the first place. Grant beneficiaries should receive their money in full, in cash or their bank, with only 10% deductions for one funeral policy. It seems the problem lies within the system. The CPS created Sasa branded current bank accounts and facilitates EFT stop and debit order deductions. Creditors can now instruct the bank to make deductions for loans, advance airtime, water and electricity with or without proper authorization from the beneficiary. The secondary financial services is actually where companies are reaping their major profits from. He says CPS gets 16 rand per month for every beneficiary payment. That's a contract with 10 billion rand over five years. So the, the kind of fee at, 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 that we pay them per service is profitable, but where they're actually reaping additional profits beyond what we can possibly give to them is through the kind of monies they're making through the loans um, and the deductions and I mean, um, secondary financial services. According to the N1 annual report, during the year 2013, 42% of their South African revenue was derived from the CPS contract, amounting to millions of rands. Businesses have to make money in order to survive and in order to put in money back into social development. If they don't make any money, there will be no social development. So it's always a tug of war between, you know, big companies making too much profit. How much is too much profit? The National Credit Act requires an affordability test prior to a loan being granted. Most cases seen by the Black Sash have incomplete paperwork, dubious authorizations and do not include an affordability assessment in violation of the Act. Sasa argues that the deductions are in contravention of the Social Assistance Act and regulations which allows only one deduction not exceeding 10% of the value of the grant for the month. To sell you something that's either expensive or that you know is not a good product or that you know is far too costly for what you can afford. Now that's the ethicality part of it. We believe that we behave, we try, we've got our own ethical codes and we try to behave in that manner. The Constitutional Court ruling in 2014 was clear. 
Social security is a public mandate and CPS is performing a state function. I think that the chief executive of NetOne who argues that people are free of mind has a fundamental misunderstanding of how poor and marginalized people are affected by the legacy of apartheid, by the lack of education, by their social circumstances and conditions. And so to argue that people are now part and parcel of a banking system as if everything that they've gone through, their history, their past, uh, does not play a role in the way in which they then use those services is fundamentally flawed. And I think this attitude and behavior reflects, in my view, a sense of arrogance and a lack of understanding of how poor people operate in South Africa. Chantal Williams, an advocate and manager of the Human Rights Commission in the Northern Cape, says these and other deductions have a negative impact on communities. The women is meestal the hoof van hier die huishoudings met beperkte schoolopleiding en minder toegang tot werksgeleenthede. En dit in sigsia wees vir jou op die impact wat hier die huishoudings dan het en dien daar voortgesette ongereguleerde en ongemachtigde aftrekkings is van staatstoelag wat bedoel is om armoede te bekamp. The problem is, is that we can only do that under the systems we control. We cannot do it if it comes from another one of the banks or another macro lender or another insurance company because they go through their own banks and those banks enforce the deduction on Greenrod Bank. So I can certainly check and tell you how many of those deductions were made and by whom. But what I can't do, I can't stop them. In an email reply to Special Assignment, Greenrod Bank said, any SASA client who has a debit order and who wishes to dispute its legality may in terms of the National Payment Systems Clearing Rules log a valid challenge against said illegal debit order made without proper authority to debit. No, I mean, I know, for example, that sometimes I actually get caught out and I've just explained that. I think that the poor is getting caught out a lot more because um, they're not completely in control of, 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 of what happens in that space. Um, I think that it's not legal. Uh, if you don't give informed consent, then it could be fraud if you're not giving informed consent. Um, secondly, if you're actually providing loans um, to people who cannot afford to pay that back that money. You're actually using money, um, and, and, and I think this is where we have a few cases now with the credit, national credit regulator taking some of the companies on um, because they're using social grant money to assess whether people can get loans or not. Um, and that again is counter to the, 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 the new lending act. So is, there's a lot of contraventions of many regulations and laws taking place. But this may soon change. The Constitutional Court also ruled that the contract with Cash Paymaster Services was constitutionally invalid. SASA was ordered to start a new tender process. Any change that will actually impact on those profit margins will be open for contestation. So in our efforts to streamline and improve our services and cut down our administration, we've been bogged down in court action after court action after court action. Um, because it's really about a resource base that people are seeking to protect. It's really, an, an, it's really not about improving services to people. And so we want to actually make sure that we can improve services to people. We are currently in a new tender process for the payment service again. Um, and one of the things we have written into that tender specification is that beneficiaries, while we still want them to be banked, we still want them to have the facility of a bank account, that it is a special bank account that has been created specifically for the payment of social grants. And that, that special account prohibits any EFT debits or stop orders, and that's made very clear in our specifications. SASA's revised bid document now states there will be no payments, transfers, EFT debits, stop orders, deductions or other services facilitated through the beneficiary account. But in November 2014, CPS launched a new legal case to set aside the new tender specifications. We are allowing us to continue with the current tender until a new tender has been issued and awarded. That's where we are. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to win it. Why wouldn't we? In fact, we are probably the best position to win it because I think SASA loves our system. I don't believe for one second they don't like it. They've compared it to many systems in the world and they believe it's, it's probably the most advanced. We pay everyone every month. We don't miss anybody. So where's the problem?
Meanwhile, Mama Siski's problems persist, and for the foreseeable future, she will have to accept that the deductions will continue and no payback soon. For beneficiaries, the process of getting their money reimbursed is a long and costly one. In order to make use of the helpline numbers, you need to load airtime. Traveling to the Sasa offices is expensive. Frustrated, many give up seeking a remedy. We need to set up a, a dedicated unit within Sasa to manage recourse. Um, you know, because we don't want it to be dealt with at various different levels because you'll find that there's a lot of misinformation. You know, so for example, you'll find that there's a commitment by um, CPS that they've repaid people, but actually money has not gone into people's accounts. Government cannot divorce itself from the responsibility that it has to its citizens to ensure that they uh, receive the necessary social assistance and grants. To outsource this function to a private entity that really doesn't give a damn about the poor, I think is one of the fundamental challenges that we face as a society. And government's um, decision to simply lay all of the blame with that one, I think is again part of the problem. They must take responsibility and ensure that the poorest and marginalized are, are provided with the basic services. Social grants have been devised to help the poor and reduce income inequality. But since 2012, the gains made in 10 years have been compromised, with these deductions taking away the hard gains made by the state in addressing poverty. Grants are meager. There's really small amounts of money in terms of, of uh, the, the, the individual or the family concerned. Um, but they are the difference between life and death for many people across the country. And if you actually decrease that grants by fraudulent, by fraudulent means, uh, you're actually literally responsible for the death of, deaths of a number of people in this country.